Thanks for joining me on episode 509 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Joel Hallbaker, teacher, speaker, and author of Inverted Leadership. I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, develop your influence, and impact the world by using your time, your talent, and your treasures to live out your calling. Having the ability to lead through confident humility is key. And one way to be inspired to do that is to listen to this, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mater. Well, then sometimes you actually are even going to have to cut that person out of your life, either literally as in avoid them and not talk to them, or at the very least, move them mentally into the I can't give any value to this person's opinion list. And if that's a very close friend or family member, that can be really, really hard to do. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about developing your influence through stewarding your talent, I talk with you about how to deal with people that put down your dream or your calling, why people will often put other people's dreams and calling down, and why you need to recognize these naysayers and what you can do about it. You've heard me talk about developing your talent, and one of the best ways to do that is through books. But if you're like most people today, it's hard to find the time to read. And that's why today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Go to inspiredstewardship.com slash audible to sign up, and you can get a 30-day free trial. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from, and you can pick one and listen your way to developing your talents via Audible. That's inspiredstewardship.com slash Audible to get your free trial and listen to great books the same way you're listening to this podcast. If you've ever had a dream or calling and you shared it with others, odds are pretty good that you've run into at least one person who's a naysayer about your dream, who says things to you like, you know, that's not what normal people do, or says something like, you know, you can't make any money doing that, or are you qualified to do that? The truth is that oftentimes people around you, sometimes people who you love, sometimes your family, sometimes your friends, will put down your dream. They'll put down your calling. They'll look at what you feel called to do, and they'll say, it's really not worth doing. Even though you are excited about it, even though you have a true feeling that this is something that God has put on your heart and something that you're supposed to do, they look at you and they say, "Mm, you know, I don't think that's something you should do. Now, hopefully you've also got some folks around you that are supportive, that hold you up and reach out to you and tell you that they're so excited that you're doing something that you feel called to do. But I bet you've run into people before who are naysayers. And the truth is, more often than not, when when people are doing that, the, the truth is that there's an internal psychology for them. There's something going on in their own heart and mind and soul Usually it's some sort of fear. They either have a fear that you're going to leave or you're going to change in some way. You're going to do something and go away from them. Maybe they have a fear that if you go out and do this thing and live your dream, then it's going to remind them of the fact that they haven't lived theirs. Sometimes they're angry because they've given up their dream and now they're forced into living out someone else's dream for them. And so they want you to give up your dream as well, because somehow that makes them feel better. 
But the truth is being threatened, being afraid is not a reason to reach out to others and pull them back from their dream. So what are some things you can do if you found yourself surrounded by these naysayers, especially ones that are family and friends, people close to you? What are some things that you can do to actually improve the situation? Well, sometimes you actually can persuade them. You know, sometimes they're actually trying to be helpful. They're trying to point out problems and challenges and things that could go wrong. And if you sit down with them and you talk to them about the the dream and you explain to them that you know it's going to be risky, you know it's going to be hard, but here's the plans I have, here's what I'm trying to do, and here's what I need from you to help me make it happen, they can begin to become convinced to follow you. Sometimes they can at least become convinced to just not tear you down. You know, sometimes, too, another way or another thing you can do is you need to actually internally recognize the fact that maybe this person's opinion needs to be one that mentally you move to the I can't listen to this person's list. You know, some other things you can do, you can recognize the fact that you want to be able to live without regret. You want to choose your own path and not worry 10, 20, 30 years from now whether or not you did it. Because the fear for you, the regret of not doing it, is greater than the fear of doing it. And you need to explain that to the other folks around you and see if they can hear that. And if they really can't, if they still can't support you, even after you've talked to them about it and you've explained to them, you've shown them that you know that there are other people that have done what you want to do, you've got a big goal and you know that you're going to have to work and take action and take some risk and do hard things, and you've showed them that other people believe in you, and if you've shown them all of that and they still can't come around to supporting your dream or at least agreeing to not tear it down, well, then sometimes you actually are even going to have to cut that person out of your life, either literally as in avoid them and not talk to them, or at the very least, move them mentally into the I can't give any value to this person's opinion list. And if that's a very close friend or family member, that can be really, really hard to do. But the truth is you need to recognize these people. You need to recognize naysayers in your life, and you need to begin to recognize how you can deal with them if you're ever going to really live out your calling and live out your dream, because the truth is it's really hard to do it. It's really hard to find your calling and live it out, but it is all worth it. And you need to recognize the people that are holding you back. And you need to pray for them and you need to care for them, but you sometimes need to separate yourself from them. That doesn't mean surround yourself with just yes people that say everything you do is perfect, but it means surround yourself with people that even if they're telling you something that may go wrong, they're doing it to help lift you up so that you can live your calling as opposed to so that you can stay with them and be held back and disappointed and sad. And when you recognize those people, you need to move on. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of talent, you can go over to inspiredstewardship.com slash talent and sign up for our five-week series on the stewardship of talent. Or if you're in the U.S., you can text 44222 talent tips. That's talent tips to 44222 and get those tips. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures. Develop your influence and impact the world.